After two and a half months off, World Cup qualifying is back with a bang. The U.S. men's national team will take on an El Salvador team fighting to keep their faint World Cup dream alive. Let's talk about this game a little bit. So for those who don't know, this game is going to be 7 o'clock Eastern Thursday on ESPN2. And while you're here, subscribe to the channel, like the video, and hit me up with a follow on Twitter because there's a lot more of me on there. But let's jump right into this preview. So these two teams actually met already in qualification, actually on the first match day. So this is a bit of a rematch. That game was at Cuscatlan, and that was El Salvador's best game that they played of the qualifiers. Now... There are reasons for that. That game was played in a sold out Cuscat lot. It wasn't supposed to be sold out, but it was sold out. Completely full to the brim. It was ridiculous. The atmosphere was crazy and one of the best atmospheres I've ever seen at a soccer game anywhere in the world. So kudos to them. And that really pushed that team on to have a really good game. Keep a clean sheet against the US. Well, that was a game that Gio Reyning got injured in and he hasn't been back since. But other than that, the US just had a pretty poor performance in the final third. Couldn't create chances. There were a couple guys that got tired quick. They it was just a bad game for the U.S., but the U.S. eventually did bounce back. Now the U.S. is flying pretty high. El Salvador, we'll talk about them in more detail later, but yeah, the U.S. had a difficult time playing against El Salvador the last two time, the last time these two teams met. Let's first look at how the U.S. could line up and how that will translate into how I think the U.S. is going to play. So this is the lineup that I think that Greg Berhalter is going to go with. So I'll just run through this real quickly. Matt Turner's the goalie because Zach Steffen hasn't reported for camp yet and he may have some back injuries, so he may may not be playing this game. The two center backs, Miles Robinson and Walker Zimmerman, are both out of season in MLS. I think Greg Berhalter will still trust them because I think that's his A pairing, though I personally would prefer Chris Richards over Walker Zimmerman. The two fullbacks being Destin Robinson kind of pick themselves because Dest is by far our best right back, and Anthony Robinson is the only left back on the roster. And Berhalter even said that he's concerned about the lack of left backs, even though he's the one who picked the roster. The midfield, I think, is going to go with our best possible midfield, MMA. Now, we just have to be a bit cautious, because Tyler Adams is carrying a yellow card. He's been carrying a yellow card since September 5th, so one more yellow card, he misses the Canada game. So, if we put him out here in this game, we're risking missing him for Canada. I think maybe we don't need to do that, and I understand why we might want to start Kellen Acosta at the 6. He's more than capable of doing it against El Salvador, especially with Musa and McKenney in front of him, but we'll see what Greg Berhalter does. For the wingers, Pulisic will absolutely start on the left wing. He's, he's the face of this team. The right winger, I think it could be a couple guys. I wouldn't be surprised if he went with Paul Areola, who is a so-called Berhalter favorite, and has been linked with some transfer speculation the last few days looks like he's going to be going to fc dallas but i think he's going to go with brendan aronson who's also been linked with some transfers to potentially leeds united for upwards of 20 million dollars tim way is probably the first choice especially with geo reina still out but tim way is not 100 percent fit and i would like him to start against canada if possible and maybe give 60 minutes against canada the striker is going to be, I think, Ricardo Pepe, who is still the number one striker for the U.S. Giassi Zardes has been in camp with Berhalter and is maybe another one of those so-called Berhalter favorites. And also it's in Columbus. So there are a lot of things indicating it could be Giassi Zardes. For all I know, it could be, but I think it's going to be Pepe. I would go with Pepe myself. So what do we look at with this team here? We see Matt Turner, Walker Zimmerman, and Miles Robinson. None of those three are capable of really playing out of the back which is a disadvantage. It would have been nice to have Zach Steffen for this game. It would have been nice to have a John Brooks in camp because we're going to have a lot of the ball in this game. And there are some added challenges that El Salvador will pose that other teams necessarily won't. So I feel like it's going to have to be a lot more direct going forward. A lot more direct. We can't really necessarily play it out of the back so much with these guys in the back. Qualification hasn't exactly gone to plan for La Selecta. See, they came into it after a really good Gold Cup, trying to just go out there and make a push for that fourth spot. But the way that Panama came out of the gates and El Salvador struggled to do so, well, that made things difficult for everyone vying for that fourth spot. Jamaica had a bit had a bit of a delayed start because of their issues with their players. Costa Rica have just been consistently mediocre. And for El Salvador and Honduras, who have just failed to get results where they really should have, they're just way off the pace now. And El Salvador, for example, only have one win. It did come at home against Panama, 
But other than that, they, they have three draws. Maybe some of those should have been wins. And they had some losses which maybe they should have taken a point from. Like that loss to Panama, I feel like they should have gotten at least a point out of that. With a tough remaining schedule, they still have to go to the US, go to Honduras, go to Jamaica, go to Mexico. Qualification is pretty much out of reach for this El Salvador team. In fact, their odds of qualification are less than 1%. However, there's still a lot to play for. This is a team which Hugo Perez is gearing toward 2026, where they are hoping to qualify, and because of the new format, they should qualify. And they also kind of want to prove a point, too, to just show the world that El Salvador is back and ready to compete in CONCACAF once again after being a laughing stock for a couple decades. All right, I don't know a whole lot about El Salvador, but this is uh, the best guess of the lineup, so thanks to Jay Hernandez for helping with that. And let's just run through it pretty quickly. Gonzalez, the goalkeeper, is from Alianza in the domestic league. The back line isn't too bad. Tamakas is the right back from Alianza. He has a lot of caps. The left back is Larin. And then there's Villalobos as a left center back. Zavaleta as the right center back. Last, he, I think he was last with Toronto. I don't know if he signed a new contract, but he was last with Toronto FC and MLS, so he's one of their better players. We look at the midfield, Monterosa. He may start today as the six. And then as the two other um, central midfielders, Landa Verde and Alex Roldan, who is the captain of this team. And Roldan, he can kind of play in a lot of places, so we don't know where he's going to play. But obviously from the Sounders, everyone is familiar with him. Just signed a new contract there. And Enrico Duenas as the attacking midfielder. He's never lived in El Salvador. He'd in fact never even been to El Salvador before these qualifiers began. But he was recruited. He's actually from the Netherlands. Uh, he was playing in the second division the first half of the season, but his loan got recalled, so he's actually playing with Vitesse now, which is a pretty well-known Dutch team. So this is going to be an interesting team. Here's why. Actually, and this is going to come as a surprise to a lot of people, statistically, El Salvador are the team in the Ocho that press the most. Like, that's not what you'd expect, because typically the stereotype is that the Central American teams like to sit back, five at the back, try and hit you on the counter. El Salvador actually press the most and that's down to Hugo Perez who's the coach and I actually had the opportunity a couple of months ago to speak with Gerson Perez who's the assistant coach and pretty much he said the same thing they're trying to be a bit more ambitious and also I mentioned the recruiting with uh, Hernandez they've been really heavily recruiting in the US so a lot of the guys in this team are and they grew up in the US a lot of these guys in the squad so and also the guys in the youth teams that they're recruiting so that's another interesting aspect of this team they do have a couple absences though, uh, Ronald Rodriguez, who's a defender who probably would have potentially started, couldn't get a visa, so he's out for this game. Christian Martinez, who's a central midfielder from San Carlos in Costa Rica, has COVID and is also out. That's not a critical loss for them, but again, it's another player they probably would have liked to have. So as I mentioned, El Salvador are going to be a team that come at you. They are actually going to try and play soccer. They're not necessarily going to sit back, but they might find themselves falling into a bit more of a low block as the game progresses, at which point the U.S. are going to need to try and crack that pressure, try and break them down. And that's where it would have been nice to have a Gio Reyna or a Georgi Mihailovic who didn't make this team. Gio Reyna is injured. So it's going to maybe have to come down to a guy like Yunus Musa or Brendan Aronson to just kind of break that resistance and try and find an opening. Now there's also the added aspect is that the game is being played in Columbus, Ohio. They're going with Snow, Ohio. Um, it's not going to snow on game day. There's only a 10% chance of precipitation. Right now the weather forecast is 32 degrees for Columbus on Thursday, which is honestly not that bad. And if that's the weather, that's pretty good given that it's winter in the Midwest. But it's still going to be a big challenge, especially for El Salvador, because a lot of these guys are coming from the domestic leagues, uh, like El Salvador, a couple guys from Guatemala and Costa Rica, so maybe some added challenges there. But they've been training here in the U.S. They've been training in Columbus, so they are a bit acclimated. For the U.S., most of these guys are coming from Europe, guys from Germany, England, and so on. But there are still some guys who maybe aren't ready for this, like a Yunus Musa who plays in Spain, a lot of the guys from the MLS area who have been training in Phoenix the last couple weeks. It's a bit of an adjustment for them, but I don't think the weather for this game specifically is going to be that huge of an impact because the field, it's a, it's a new field, it's, the stadium is heated, they have all sorts of 
preparations for this game so I'm not too worried about the weather for this game but for the next two it's gonna have play a much bigger role so what's my prediction for this game I'm gonna go with 2-0 to the US I think that even though El Salvador have had some good games and they gave the US a really good test in September the US just has a stronger group and while there isn't a team that necessarily scores a whole lot of goals the talent is just there to get enough and get what takes to win I think Weston McKenney, who's just in ridiculous form right now, will have a really big game. And Yunus Musa has also been in really good form, got a goal against Atletico Madrid that weekend. I think he'll also potentially get on the score sheet. We'll have to see what happens. But again, we have to be careful. This isn't an El Salvador team who isn't going to threaten us like El Salvador teams in the past. This is a good El Salvador team. They're well coached. And they're trying to prove a point, even though they're pretty much out of the qualifier. So let me know what you think. Do you think the UFC will beat El Salvador? What do you think the score is going to be? Who's going to have some big performances? And yeah, don't forget to follow me on Twitter and subscribe to the video. And I will see you guys later.